It's been quite a while since I have repasted this Acer Predator 15. This is my uh, mobile workstation. Um, if you're not aware, this is the model with the i7-6700HQ and the GTX 1070 uh, mobile. That is not the Max-Q version. That is the mobile version from before the Max-Q came out. Slightly uh, higher CUDA core count than the desktop variant. Um, lower clock speeds, but that can be bumped up with Afterburner. Anyway, um, temperatures are getting a little bit high in some applications. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and repaste it. And I do remember that the last time uh, I had this apart, some of the thermal pads had gotten a little rough looking so we've got some thermal pad material here one and a half millimeter and one millimeter um, from arctic and we will use those to replace the thermal pads on the vram so uh, first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and pop the back cover off here yeah we can see there's some crap in there we'll also be cleaning out the fans when we do this um, turn it over. We're going to go ahead and remove the frost core, which is an extra fan. And I will go ahead and blow that thing out. Um, I believe I've shown that in another video in the past. And we will go ahead and get to pulling the back panel off. Um, here you can see the one terabyte solid state drive that I installed to replace the um, spinning platter drive that was in there. And then we have stacked our two M.2 drives over here. Um, they are standard M.2 drives. They are SATA, not PCIe. However, the bottom one can accept the bottom slot can't accept a PCIe um, M.2 drive. I just don't have one. So these are in RAID configuration. We're going to go ahead and remove them. So this one right here is capable of taking a PCIe style of M.2 drive, but I have them in RAID configuration instead, and they are using SATA. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the RAM. On this side, now there is RAM on the other side. Um, if you are going to upgrade to 64 gigs of RAM, you will have to do this same procedure as well to be able to get to it. So this drive is a little tight in there. It's gotten stuck a little bit. Go ahead and pull the connector. All right, and then of course we've got our little subwoofer here. So we have to remember where that goes there. All right. And now we've got the whole bottom opened up and we can see that there's definitely a lot of dust 
in these fans. Um, so I am going to go ahead and pull this whole cooling assembly off. Um, if you were to be replacing, or if I were to be replacing, here's your battery, by the way. If I were to be replacing the, um, <clears throat> the other two dims, um, going up to 64 gigabytes with 16, uh, gigabyte dims, um, I would have to take this whole board off, but I should just be able to take off the, uh, the fans and, and cooling system here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we have them marked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I don't see a number eight. Um, all right, this is marked as fan, so we are going to pull that one. And this one is connected along with it. That one is for the little subwoofer which will stick out of the way for the moment. Actually, we'll disconnect them if we can here from one another. All right. seems loose, five seems loose, four seems loose, three seems loose, two seems loose, and one seems loose. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of rock this back and forth until we get it loosened up enough that it comes up. Oh, and then there we have our second fan. So Go ahead and turn this over. I may have just dropped a screw. I'll have to look for that. But we can see that the thermal paste is a little crunchy. So we'll definitely be replacing that. As well as uh, you know, right here we have a torn thermal pad uh, for that choke. Um, actually the thermal pads for the RAM modules, which are here, this is all GDDR5, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and uh, those are all 1 gigabyte GDDR5 uh, RAM modules. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll replace that thermal pad, which uh, corresponds there, and uh, it looks like they may have or may not have used Arctic as well. But these other thermal pads are still in good shape, so we'll probably reuse them. But we'll uh, replace that one for the choke. So I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, here, the, the fans, which are quite dusty, and I'm going to go and clean them out. And I will be back to clean off the GPU, the CPU and uh, clean up this inductor and the plate and uh, get everything back together. Okay, I'm back and I've cleaned off our contact points for the GPU and CPU as well as cut a new thermal pad here for this inductor which I've cleaned off as well. Um, we went with a one and a half millimeter thermal pad because that's what it looks like the rest of these are one and a half millimeter. If it's too thick and causes problems, I do have one millimeter, which we can switch to. So at this point, all there is left to do is, uh, well, 
I didn't mention that I, I did clean out the fans, um, as you can see here. There's a little bit of residue, but they're cleaned out fairly well with compressed air, and I cleaned out the fin stacks as well. Um, the thermal paste that was on there was a little crusty. Uh, it has been six or eight months since I've done this. I like to do it every six months or so. Um, and I will now go ahead and repaste. Since we've got the thermal pad taken care of, I'll go ahead and repaste with Gelid. I think the last time that I did this, I used a different thermal paste. Um, but this time I'll use Gelid. Gelid is one of my favorites. I personally like to use the spread method for thermal paste. So I'm going to put some on there. And I'm not going to worry that there's a lot because it's going to get spread out. And Gelid is non conductive. Alright, so I go ahead and use their uh, their little spreading spatula that Gullet gives you. And this is the GTX 1070 chip right here. We are pasting it. And around here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one gigabyte. GDDR5 memory modules, RAM modules. All right. So the GPU is nicely covered. We'll go ahead and cover the CPU. And then we'll just go ahead and uh, replace everything in the opposite order that it came out. So, start with this here. We'll get it lined up as best we can with uh, screws here. Go ahead and pop our fans back in. Can't forget about this woofer either. in place and hooked up and we will go ahead and start at number one of course give it a few turns in and then we'll move over to number two and same with number three we'll just go in order here four Oh, and five looks like it dropped out. So I'm going to have to find five. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Um, number five had fallen down into the chassis over here. Um, but thankfully, I was able to get it out without much problem. So we'll go ahead and continue here. And of course, number seven over there is this little guy here. And it's really just keeping um, some cooling from this plate uh, going to the inductors over there. Uh, since the chip is, is right here under the, the heat pipes. Uh, so the GPU is there, CPU is there. So we've gone through all these. We'll go back through. Tighten up one. And two. We'll just keep going around until they're nice and tight. Try and tighten them about the same amount each screw as you go. Uh, number seven here obviously will be a little bit different. These other screws have springs on them, tension springs. It's uh, pretty normal for GPUs. If you've ever taken one apart before. Um, also for CPUs. Standard CPU coolers oftentimes have sprung screws as well. So now we're down nice and tight. One, one two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Our woofer is in the right spot. Our fans 
both fan headers are plugged in and we can go ahead and put everything back together in reverse order so let's start off by taking our cover here um, which should go this way and we will make sure that our SATA connector gets moved in there. Now, were you going to um, get to the other RAM slots, you would have had to uh, remove some more screws, remove that main board, and turn it over. And you will find the other two DIMM slots on the other side. I have two 8 gigabyte uh, DDR4 modules on that side uh, to go along with the two 8 gigabyte modules on this side. Um, so it came with on the other side. I added the two for this side. However, uh, you could go up to 64 with the system. So that's back together. I'll go ahead and get these other screws in and then we'll put the drives back in, put the RAM back in and put this little top cover back on along with the fan in the side and we're all done. So thanks for watching and I hope that you found this informative. If you did, please hit the like button and uh, consider subscribing for more content in the future. Once again, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.